Hi everyone, wanted to get started on looking at some of your initial images for your final project. A couple things I'm going to look for here. First of all, we want to be cohesive in all of our images. So we want to make sure that the whole series of images works together as one. And probably more importantly, looks like they were all shot by the same photographer using the same methods and the same style, if that makes sense. So uh, the first person that we have here is Kaylee's work and Kaylee is shooting some uh, track and field images in her uh, statement that she talks about her intent. She really wants to show what it's like to be in the shoes of an athlete, uh, which she is one of. So in this image, I really like the, the angle that you're shooting from. So first of all, you're on the inside of the track rather than the outside of the track. Obviously, the outside of the track is where the spectators are. The inside of the track is where the athletes are. So I love the fact that you shot it from there. I really like that you've gotten down low in this image. I think that provides us, again, with a little bit more of an interesting vantage point that isn't common. And I even love these, these shadows going across the frame that kind of add a little bit of depth into it. The image does look slightly out of focus to me, or maybe maybe better stated, I feel like you know maybe the area that should be in sharp focus is kind of right here because my eye is going there. And I think if we look at this image, probably the area that's in the sharpest focus is this runner's chest area right here and sort of the grass right in here, which I would say on the interest level of things is probably maybe the least interesting. I, you know, I kind of like this uh, mixture of colors in the different sneakers or the different running shoes that we have going there. So perhaps maybe think about focusing in on that area. But all in all, really solid image, uh, like, like the start here and, and like the, the vantage point that you're working from. Uh, your second image, you're shooting up a little bit higher in this image so I feel like it's a little bit more of a common point of view so from that perspective maybe I'd like to see you continue to shoot in the mode of the other vantage point from the previous image that you shot there the one thing I do love here is you've got some really beautiful light going on you're shooting right at dusk uh, looks like the lights from the maybe the, the stadium haven't quite come on yet uh, but Nonetheless, I, I really like the light here. Maybe this race shot once the lights are fully illuminating the track, or maybe even 15 minutes later when the sky gets just a little bit more color in it might work. The biggest issue that I have here, though, is, again, this image is really out of focus, so we've got to have sharp focus on an image like this, and... If I look at your file info, I think we can get some pretty good clues as to why it's out of focus. You're shooting at 1 100th of a second. That's just way too slow for shooting runners. You've got to shoot at about 1 500th of a second uh, and perhaps even greater. So in this instance, we would have to take that ISO and push that ISO up to 1600. And then we're in the range that we can get the, the exposure uh, in a range of one five hundredth of a second. So we've got to make that imager uh, more sensitive to light. I thought I'd throw in a third shot here. You didn't submit this for the assignment, but you did give me this shot uh, through email. And quite honestly, I, th I love this shot. I think this is a dynamite shot. I think it takes that great vantage point of the first image and then introduces some blurring motion, which I think is a really creative technique. If you guys remember Ernst Haas's work uh, from Module 3 or 4, I think this is very reminiscent of that and of the group of images. This one really speaks to me the most. So perhaps, Kaylee, you could uh, start experimenting with some more blurred shots. I know you had asked me whether a blur uh, could be used for every image in the series. Um, right now, I, I don't have the answer to that. I'd like to see more images and see how they all come together might work so uh you know keep shooting shooting some in this style 
The one other thing that I did want to address that you talked about in your uh, statement here was that you couldn't decide whether you should go black and white or color with these. I have to say, definitely go color here. This this project doesn't seem to me like it, it has the elements that really work in black and white, which black and white images tend to be very uh, geometric, uh, you know, ha focusing heavily on shapes and they also tend to have lighting that really makes the lights and the darks kind of stand out. I feel like in, in your images here that the color is really part of the subject. It's such, you know, such a like a hot point in these images that I think by putting them in black and white, you're really gonna gonna downplay that. And, and that really is one of the best parts of the image, especially this this blur image. I think if you saw this in black and white, which, you know, certainly we can just go in here real quick and do a black and white conversion on there. I just don't think that's as strong an image in black and white. So stick to the color unless you really come up with a compelling reason for black and white. But uh, other than that, well done. Uh, good start here. So keep on this, this road. And then next up, we have Kayla's work. And she is photographing imperfect produce, which I think works from two perspectives. Uh, first of all, from a personal point of view, I know Kayla really enjoys shooting food, and that is an area of personal interest for her. So clearly this is going to work from that perspective. And then from the second perspective, um, just shooting imperfect fruit and particularly the flaws i think you know the flaws can be as interesting as fruit that is fruit or vegetables that are absolutely perfect um, i'm reminded of edward weston's photography if you guys remember the peppers in fact let me uh we'll call this up real quickly So, you know, here's Weston's peppers, and certainly these are not ideal or perfect peppers. They are more flawed, but the flaws really are what's interesting about them here. So, I think this project can really work. The one thing that um, I'm not so crazy about in this image is simply you've got it a little bit off center here, and this one you've put it really, really off center, which in this instance, it kind of works because I can almost envision, you know, having some type or some text or something like that on this end of the photograph. Whereas this one, it, this kind of just feels like an awkward spot here. It's not really a spot that we could fit any text or anything else in there. Um, it just seems a little bit off center. So uh, just kind of clean that up. And certainly if you're gonna end up putting text on things, you know, you can even go ahead and experiment using text. Uh, in Photoshop, there's a text tool. If you just go to the toolbar and hit the T button, that allows you to put text in here. So, you know, you could put stuff like that right in. I know this is not Cal, but we're going to call it Cal for all intent and purposes. And then... Uh, you know, do something like that. And I think... That works. So if you want to hand stuff in, if, if you do plan on using text in there, certainly feel free to go ahead and, and add text and insert it in it if that's the case. But I think you're on the right track here. Uh, I love the white clean background. It really brings emphasis to all of these imperfections in the uh, vegetables and fruits. And certainly your lighting is also really well done in here. So good job with everything. You are on the right path. So keep Keep up the good work. And next up we have Tyrone's work. Tyrone is working with sports cars and he is fascinated with them. So certainly this is great fodder for visual experimentation. First shot here we've got looks like the tight shot of the steering wheel. I love the repetition of circular patterns here. And, you know, your project reminds me uh, in, ver in some way, some of the, uh, I'm sorry, in some way, 
reminiscent of the work of Paul Strand. So we'll just call that up really quickly. You know, this image, how he's focusing in on the details and the formal elements of the car. So we see the circles, the patterns, the, the shadows in there. All of them work really well. So I think great idea. Uh, I like the direction you're going with this project. The one thing I want to caution you about here, take a look at this. The Jaguar is out of focus. So I think we want to get that in sharp focus. Let's see if your file info gives us any insight as to what's going on here. Yeah, your f-stop is 5.6. So I, I would probably increase that ISO from 100 uh, to 400. That'll give you two more f-stops in here. So that'll put you at f11. And I think with f11, that small depth of field that is present in this image uh, will we'll extend a little deeper and you'll be able to get that that uh, Jaguar in focus. And your second image, you're getting down real low, focusing in on the headlights and the grill of this vehicle. Again, really great idea. The one thing that I would ask you to consider in an image like this is perhaps even getting down lower, or I'm not sure if this is your car or a friend's car or a family member's car, but perhaps getting them to move the car to an area that the background is a little cleaner. I think that this background um, just is a little distracting. Not a major thing, but certainly enough that, that it disrupts. And especially having the truck over here. Um, I could probably live with the trees, but I think having that truck there uh, would, would be something that I'd want to get out of there. So two things get down even a little bit lower. That's going to put the background as being the sky rather than the houses and just maybe even get in a little bit tighter, focus in on just what's going on in the grill here. I was just going to try a quick, quick crop here. You know, the lights of these vehicles really are fascinating so maybe think think about even playing around with them and going towards more of a form-based exploration of the details of the vehicle so when I say form-based you know looking at the shapes the patterns stuff like that because those unique details really are, are at least for me one of the things that makes sports cars so interesting so uh, good job though good start here and uh, keep pushing forward and next up we have Joey's images. So um, what I really like about this shot is sort of this little edge lighting that is going on in the side of the athlete. Here I think that it really separates him from the background. The image is, is still a little on the dark side. I think I'd probably consider lightening this up just a little bit. You know maybe something Oh, about halfway there, maybe like that. So it it really having this little bit of edge lighting here brings attention to the silhouette of the athlete, and certainly the silhouette of the athlete here is important because it it speaks to the fact that this person is in shape. They take care of their body. You know, working out is an important part of their life. So having that little edge lighting in there works really well. So more shots of uh, shooting fitness stuff. I do like the positioning of the camera here. Again, very low, taking a uh, unique and interesting vantage point. I like the expression on the athlete's face here. And even, I got to say, having the frame tilting here a little bit adds a little bit of dramatic energy to it. You know, it's not a very straight on level shot. It's diagonal, and having that little bit of diagonal in there adds a little bit of, of tension, a little bit of energy, which certainly, again, goes alongside with the notion of uh, doing fitness in stuff. So good job. I like what you're doing with the project so far. 
Uh, the one caution that I would have for you is, is try not to be too staged or too literal in your photographs. Your first image is, is maybe getting a little bit towards the staged point. So try to, try to be candid as much as possible here. Avoid taking images that, that seem, you know, cliched, hackneyed, uh, you know, just done to, to illustrate something. Try to, to make your stuff unique looking. Try to not be, you know, very literal and straightforward with these images. And I think you should be fine. So good start here and look forward to seeing how the project evolves. And next up we have Vance's images. So Vance is shooting photographs of his Shih Tzu. And I've got to say, Vance, you kind of set yourself up a little bit for a little bit harder project than you may think. Because images of dogs are really, really cliche. I have to tell you, in the 17, 18 years I've been teaching this class, I've probably seen a couple hundred images, a couple hundred projects of people's pet dogs. And they kind of all look the same. You know, the, the picture, the tight shot of the dog's head that's slightly tilted with a lot of emphasis on the eyes. Um, you know, the, the, the side image uh, sort of showing the shape and personality of the dog. So what I'm going to say to you, I'm not going not gonna to try and talk you out of pursuing this, but I think you've got to take an approach that is very new, new and unique. And what that might evolve, involve is trying to photograph in some interesting light. Here it looks like we're just using regular ambient household light um, and it really doesn't do anything for the dog. In fact, I think your Shih Tzu's got great eyes here and I would like to see the eyes as opposed to having the eyes in shadow. So I want you to think about maybe trying to get, get the dog into an area where the lighting is a little bit better, whether that means maybe shooting outside at dusk or getting in a, a area that you can control the light a little bit better. Maybe even think about getting some floodlights or something like that that you can add to the scene and control the light a little bit better. And then I, I think you've got to, you know, get some more images that show us why the dog is unique. Connect us to this dog's personality a little bit better. So maybe some props, maybe some balls, maybe even including some other people and the interaction between the dog and the people that certainly would be unique and different as you know, when we start to introduce human elements into things, there's always now expressions and gestures and stuff like that that always end up giving something a, a unique personality. So I, I again, don't want to dissuade you from pursuing this project, but I, I don't want this project to look common, which I fear that it might. So really push yourself to, to get yourself away from shooting cliche images of dogs and try and do stuff that is really going to express the unique personality of this dog. So put some time into it and uh, hopefully you come up with something that uh, works for it. So keep pushing and let me know if I can be of help in any way. If you want to run some shots by me through email or... Uh, however, let me know and I'll certainly give you some good feedback. All right, thanks. So next up we have Rachel's work. Uh, Rachel is going to explore the renaissance of Buffalo through the various iconic details that have emerged throughout the city. She gave us one color image uh, because she wants to do her project in black and white and just sort of a color image to reference the difference between black and white, which I love that you've done here. I certainly think your decision to go in black and white really works well. Um, 
I picked this image because I think it highlights one of the things about black and white photography that is present when it's successful. Black and white, because you don't have the distraction of color, tends to bring emphasis to geometric shapes and patterns and forms. And this image certainly has all of the above. So as you're shooting these things, I think keep an eye out for shapes, for, for patterns, for things that are sort of visually arousing to us. And I think this image is a great example of that. In contrast, the first image here, um, while I, I, I kind of get what you're going on here, and I think this image from a black and white perspective works really well because you've, you've got the white bird on the darker water and then sort of these, these white details uh, up against middle grays and blacks. All, all this works really well, um, but I think it's just too busy and doesn't isolate enough on the shapes. I almost feel like if we pull into just shooting or just capturing the bird and this piece of uh, railing or decking here, this almost feels like a stronger project than or stronger image than that previous one, just because we get rid of some of that background distraction, maybe even something like that. Of course, if we do this, it takes away that that connection to the Buffalo horizon and the Buffalo waterfront. So it's kind of kind of a balancing act that you're going to have. I love this image, you know, the the negative space that's going on here and especially contrasting up against the the iconic features of the Buffalo waterfront, the uh, the grain elevators and of course city hall down here. Lots of negative space here, which just draws our eye beautifully to the picnic bench. I think we can tighten this frame up just a little bit, though. Bring it in like that, and I think you've got a home run here. So uh, image three and two, I think, are really solid images. Image one, I think you just uh, have to rethink this shot and maybe, maybe try not to include so much in the frame. This image also is just almost feels like it's much more about the bird than it is about the waterfront. So keep that in mind and uh, look forward to seeing the rest of your work. Good job so far. So next up we have Liam's work. And Liam is taking on images of hockey. But what he is doing, rather than shooting the game itself, he is looking at some of the details of the sport and the equipment that is associated with it. And I think this is a great, great way to go here, Liam. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of projects of hockey games and, you know, shooting the action itself. And inevitably, most of them fall short because shooting, shooting ath athletics, especially hockey, generally speaking, takes up uh, some pretty exotic lenses and and quite honestly, it takes years of experience to get really good at it. What you're doing here is taking more of a form-based approach. You're looking at sort of the, the visual pleasure in all of the shapes and patterns and arrangements that are associated with the game. So I love it. I love what's going on here with the color pattern, not only the geometric pattern, but also the color pattern. And then certainly the thing that's great here is that you've got the wear and tear that breaks up this pattern that makes it really work well. So fantastic shot. Uh, just would keep keep pushing it to go in that direction. And same way with this image. Although this image feels a little bit more abstract because it's not really obvious to the the average viewer what this might be. So perhaps one of the things you might think about is just having a little bit of a detail in there that helps the viewer identify what this might be. Another thought might even be titling of your images. So using titles to help the viewer understand what the image is. So all in all, great job here. Really like the direction you're going. Keep up the good work and uh, we'll see you next week. So next up we have Andrew's Im images. Andrew is taking photographs 
of Kinesius when the weather is warm. And while I think it is an interesting idea, the danger and fear that I have is that you are just going to fall into the habit of taking images that are very common. I think that, you know, anybody with their iPhone that walked out into uh, this area is going to come up with this image. So you're going to have to start to work a little bit harder to try and compose your images in a unique way. And then I think that you're going to have to find something that's a little bit more visually exciting than simply sort of these wide shots of the quad. Uh, one of the things that I, I think that, you, or one of the problems you got into with your service learning project was, again, you were sort of taking these, these very common point of view or common vantage points. And I just got to get you out of that habit. Perhaps one of the ways to, to maybe break that habit is going up into Dugan Hall, maybe go up into the top floor and start shooting straight down. And then you start capturing maybe some of the shadows, some of the patterns, some of the interesting things that we wouldn't necessarily see at this ground level that pretty much any pedestrian would see as they're walking along. So perhaps that's one way to go. Get up high, you know, whether you're shooting uh, this area or you're shooting the quad. Uh, maybe you just get up into the fourth floor of uh, Old Main and shoot that. Again here, I kind of like what's going on with the barbecue, but I almost feel like maybe shooting into the sun, so the completely other direction. So go behind them, and then you're having the, the smoke being backlit, and then it becomes kind of more visually interesting. And again, not just sort of like this common viewpoint of someone walking into the quad and snapping shots of people at the barbie. So... Andrew, try and uh, think a little differently here. Try doing some different things, shooting into the light rather than with the light at your back, and maybe shooting from different vantage points, whether that's up high or uh, putting the camera almost down on the ground. Okay, hopefully you will have some uh, good, bright, sunny days coming up. Uh, that's the other thing I didn't mention here. Logistically speaking, Hopefully we have good weather. You're kind of banking your project on the fact that we are going to have good weather. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, if we start getting into a weather pattern that looks like it's not going to be good weather, you might need to have a plan B as a backup here. So keep that in mind. And next up we have Justin's work. And Justin's going to be working on portraits, and I think this is great. This is a really strong portrait. Wow, beautiful lighting going on in here. We've got this nice warm light that is coming kind of a little bit from the side here. And what I especially love that you've done with this portrait is you've got the background that's out of focus. So it's that very soft, uh, we use the word bokeh in our description of that, that very soft, creamy background. So, great shot. Uh, I can't, can't say much more about this because I think it is a uh, total home run. So, this shot, you've gone a little bit tighter, focusing in on her eye. I'm wondering if that really works with the wider portrait. I think that, you know, maybe just working with a lot of portraits like this might be the way to go. You start throwing the eyes in there. Um, I, I think the light's maybe just not as interesting on the light here, you know, the, or on the eye. The eye's kind of shadowed. And the two things almost don't go together. So maybe think about picking one or the other. If you are going to go with the eyes, I would say that you've got to get some better lighting going on in the eyes rather than having them dark and shadowed. I think you want to bring some interest to what's going on in here because that, that really seems like it, it's what the interesting thing is. So great shot here. This probably is a direction I'd like to see you go with your portraits. 
is a really strong portrait and I think this could make for a nice series of images. So keep keep going in that direction. So next up we have Judy's work and Judy is using an expressive subject intent to try and get the viewer to want to eat the food that she's portraying. So I think that her first image here is really well done. I love the lighting that's coming from the side which is really emphasizing sort of this nice flaky or bubbly texture in in the surface of the cupcake and even that that again texture that we can sort of see the the creaminess of the chocolate frosting in there so I love that and and there's a certain rawness to these images that they don't look like very polished uh, magazine quality food images they sort of look like your everyday food, you know, home baked, home cooked kind of food. And in that way, I, I think they do look very appealing. So, you know, stuff doesn't have to be highly stylized for it to look appealing. It just needs to have really good lighting and you have to capture the interesting things about the food, which certainly in the case of a cupcake, I think we like that, that nice sort of um, bubbly, flaky, I don't know how else to describe that internal texture you know I can almost feel that this cupcake is just really moist and and you know tasty to jump to bite into so solid job with that uh, this image believe it or not I think that it, this this kind of falls in the category between a really stylized photograph and that just sort of a photograph that's almost like a quick capture or like you did with the other shot. The thing that I think you probably want to address here most is your white balance seems to be off. It seems to be a little bit on the yellowish side. Uh, so, you know, maybe we go in here and I'm just going to kind of see if I can clean that up a little bit. Notice when I I just clean a little bit of that yellow out of there. I think it's starting to, to make this look a little bit cleaner and crisper here. So solid job with the project. I like where you're going with it. I think it's working so far. So just uh, try to use some really interesting and good light on the images and make sure that, that you're really highlighting the thing about the baked good that is the most interesting. I guess if I had one other complaint with this, it's sort of the thing that I feel like is being highlighted here is the wrapper or the, the cupcake lining here as opposed to the surface of the cupcake. Maybe we need to uh, take the camera vantage point and bring it up just a little bit or maybe use a cupcake wrapper that, that isn't quite as visually uh, exciting as this. So good job, and I look forward to seeing the rest of your project. And then last but not least, we have Emily's images. And Emily is going to share with us images that sort of remind her and us about the important milestones in her life. And I guess the things that we could say sort of formed who she is as a person. So first image, I keep harping on everyone to take different vantage points. I think, Emily, you have given me a perfect example of uh, what a different vantage point can do to a common scene. So by taking that really high up vantage point, looking straight down on here, we're seeing it from a different point of view. And I think also we're sort of seeing all this chaos and clutter and then that chaos and clutter being broken up by the hands and it looks like the back of a, uh, a painting or a, a canvas that is being framed. So great job here. Love the, the vantage point. I love the direction you're going with the project. I was worried when I first read your statement, but I think uh, it, it, it looks, looks really good from the images that you're, you're shooting. And then your second shot is a picture of your grandmother putting on makeup in the mirror. Again, very creative shot. I love the exposure that you've used here. I think you captured the absolute perfect exposure. And I love the fact that 
she's in focus right here and then the picture in the mirror is slightly out of focus which gives it sort of like a dreamlike quality we we don't know whether it's the past the present what might be the case so the ambiguity that is established with that out of focus area in the photograph i think works really well to help communicate what you want to communicate in your image so great work here and uh keep on the same path so everyone uh just wrapping up here i think you guys are all on the right direction if we just had one little common thing that we would want to improve is is just again reinforcing the idea of trying to take images that are not from a common vantage point so don't be afraid to get up higher don't be afraid to get down lower and uh you know use your creativity as best as you can think about it this way if you look at an image and say okay you know the common person just walking down the street if they had a cell phone would they have been able to capture this image and if the answer to the question is yes then the image is probably going to have a certain common feeling to it that's not really going to resonate with the viewer if the answer is no then i think you're probably on to something so i look forward to seeing everyone's work uh this upcoming monday and uh again just a reminder that at the end of the next module so the end of module 13 is when your projects are going to be due so keep working hard and look forward to seeing the finished product have a good week